Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to the September 2019 edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you would like your questions answered, then click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Now, let's jump into the questions. Heather Gochioso asks, Does your dinosaur face scare small children and animals? Uh, surprisingly, no. Animals feel a kinship, I suppose, and children think dinosaurs are cool. Can space marines eat regular human food, or do they have to eat something specially made for them? As far as I'm aware, space marines can eat pretty much anything. They can eat pretty much any food that they come across, uh, they're highly resistant to poisons and toxins, etc. The one thing I know that is unique is that, within the aspirin stage at the very least, they are given certain foods that are laced with chemicals and, bizarrely enough, ceramics that aid in the ossification of their skeleton. Is it more common for Martian children to be born artificially instead of naturally? I would assume so. I've personally not seen any source saying otherwise, but given how the Adeptus Mechanicus are, it seems more likely that they would use external womb-like devices. Voice of the Emperor asks, Can you confirm that Ankron actually said the infamous quote, Some may question your right to kill 10 billion souls, but those who understand know that I have no right to let them live. I have never recalled Angron ever saying that. The only times I've ever seen that quote mentioned were by Inquisitors, and that was, I think, in the second edition, I want to say the War Gear book? It could have been Codex Imperialis, but most likely the War Gear book, and it was just a general quote about Exterminatus. So I don't think Angron ever said that quote. Brent Feast asks, Out of all the Eldari's various methods of preventing Slanesh from devouring their souls, who do you think has the best one, and why? I think the Harlequins have the best one, because when they die, their souls go directly to Jagorak. The Inari I would put second, because when you join the Inari, if Rain effectively uh, soul rapes you, and binds your soul to Iniad, so when you die, your soul goes to Iniad. Um, craft Welders or anyone with a soul stone, you know, like certain Corsairs, I'd put next, because your soul's going into a soul stone as opposed to being drawn into the warp and eaten. Drukaria I would have to put last because if you're not actively causing suffering and pain to anyone, you're going to get eaten, effectively. Um, so yeah, sorry Drukari players, but their method in my eyes is the worst. How significant are the changes to a Chaos Worshipper's psyche and personality if they ever ascend to demonhood? I think they are accentuated based on their patron god's own traits. Um, with Fulgrim, for example, he became, you know, a lot more perverted and um, lewd. I mean, let's be honest, there's even that quote that says, Fulgrim pulled a lewd face. So, I think it does have an effect. It may be more subtle in some champions compared to others, but it is there, I feel. I've heard it said that every Primarch is a Psyker of at least some kind. Do we have any idea of what Gilliman's psychic powers are? Gilliman's psychic potential is one of the more subtle. I think it's tied more to persuasion or subtle manipulation because of his skills as a diplomat. I think some of it might be um, psychically assisted, as it were. Guanaco14878 asks, Do you still honour the Omnissiah, or has being around those not blessed by the machine made you more sympathetic to the Imperial Creed? Yes, I do still honour the Omnissiah. What was your rank in the Adeptus Mechanicus before becoming a Lord Inquisitor? Logis. Not by a Logis, Logis. Chief Surgeon asks, Is there any Necron tier that escaped the Biotransference, and could it be possible that they could still exist? As far as I'm aware, there are no Necron tier who escaped the Biotransference process, so I find it very unlikely that there could be some Necron tier descendants till this day. If some did, then given the fact that the War in Heaven was over 65 million years ago, it's more than likely that any surviving Necron tier had evolved into a new species. Let's be honest, 65 million years is an incredibly long time. I know that the Eldari didn't really evolve that much, but the Orcs certainly did, so it's possible. Do you think that the Catan known as the Traveller could play a part in a coming story for the Milky Way galaxy? I don't think so. I think if GW are going to bring in one of the Catan to play a major role in the story, it would be one of the big four. 
uh, the big four being Nightbringer, Deceiver, Void Dragon, and Outsider. So, I mean, let's be honest, out of all those Catan, the one who needs the biggest lore explanation or lore expansion is the Outsider. So I don't think a minor one like the Traveler would even get in edgeways. Zero Hits asks, if you had to choose between Lehman Russ, Sanguinius, and Jakatai Khan, who would you bed, wed, and behead? AKA fuck, marry, kill, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right, uh, okay. Um, wed Jakatai Khan, because I think he'd be a little bit too smelly to actually bed. Sorry, and he's too nice to kill. Bed Sanguinius, because he's the pretty one, so bed the good looking one. And behead Lehman Rust because out of those three, I don't like Lehman Rust. So bye bye, doggy boy. We're gonna take him out back and old yell at him. Bang. <laughs> Ghost Reaper asks, how is it that humanity was able to create the first three chaos gods at certain points in its history when it took the entire moral degradation of an entire interstellar empire made up of beings far more psychically potent than humans to create so much? Okay, I just want to clarify, humanity did not create the first three Chaos Gods. They merely came to full consciousness by the end of Terra's Middle Ages. The events that created, or at least began the creation of the Chaos Gods, took place around the time of the War in Heaven. It was due to the war between the Old Ones and the Necron Tier that caused the warp to grow more tumultuous and start generating entities within it. This led to the creation of Khorne, Zinch, and Nurgle, who all awoke by the end of Terra's Middle Ages. Humanity did not specifically create them. Kelton Green asks, What's this nonsense about Recaf being a leaf and not a bean? Right, I think this depends on the author because some authors believe that Recaf is more akin to coffee, which would make it more of a bean, but other authors treat it more like tea, so more like a leaf. So I think the best way to say this is, um, depends on the world slash breed of Recaf plant, I guess. You know, it depends if you're having tea or coffee. Because there is also um, another coffee analog called just straight up caffeine. So if you've got recaf and caffeine, that could be argued to be tea and coffee. But if you just got recaf, it could be coffee. I don't know. <laughs> and finally, Brandon A asks, what else could possibly corrupt a grey knight besides a gene stealer brood mind? Oh, that's easy. The Blade of Antwia. Easily. <laughs> read any of the Castle and Crow novels, it explicitly details how much of a corrupting influence the Blade is, and how much of a struggle it is for Castle and Crow to remain pure whilst wielding it. Besides your quest for knowledge series, is there any other kind of series you wish you could make? I have been thinking about a novel review series, but it's more down to um, time restrictions more than anything else, unless I outsource it to another creator to possibly share or something. I don't know. If I could animate, I would like to make an animated series, or at least a one-off short, but my machine won't run out. <laughs> so that concludes this edition of the Patreon Q&A sessions. As always, if you would like your questions answered, click the link in the video description below and help support the channel by becoming a patron. Until next time, this has been Remlays from 40k Theories, and we'll see you again soon. Bye bye